Just in case anybody was wondering what it looks like when an Atlas 7B Shaper explodes, we'll just pan around here. Yeah, so I got everything pretty much tore down. Um, didn't get all of it filmed. You know, it just takes forever to try to film everything and I just needed to get some headway, so. Just finished disassembling the ratchet assembly. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, and there was a coating of that blue grease, kind of like the stuff you'd use on a boat trailer wheel bearings all over everything. So I just wiped it all down with a rag. Um, I'm gonna clean this stuff up some more. And uh, I gotta find out, I think grease is probably okay for the gear, but uh, you know, nothing else should have grease, I don't think. Doing a reenactment here because this thing really put up quite a battle. So we're just disassembling the uh, the gear drive here. And first thing you gotta do is get this locking nut off. Now, I've already loosened this and had it off, so it's loose, but I had originally I just had to put the crank in there and work that out, because otherwise everything just kept spinning. All right, let's get that out of there. Once that's off, this cover can come off. Next thing we gotta do is get the uh, driven gear off of here with our um, uh, T-slot adjusting nut. Now this was frozen in here solid and what it was is the grease had completely dried out and I mean it was like like epoxy. It was in there solid. So I actually had to come in with the propane torch, warm this up just a little bit. <laughs> These are Zamac gears so you got to be careful but I had to warm it up maybe a hundred degrees or so. And then uh, I even had to come in with a punch and just tap, tap, tap back and forth until I got that T-nut to move. Okay, once you get the T-nut out, you've got a pivot uh, bolt here in the center. Now on the back um, is where the one of the linkage rods attaches to the back. There's a bushing. If you didn't take it off with the linkage rod, you need to take that off now. Okay. And then that screw has got to come out. And it was a bit of a struggle getting it out. And it's just held in there by a little bit of friction and a close fit. Be careful. This is an aluminum housing, so don't put on too much pressure. So I got a heel bar. I'm against the body of the machine on against that bolt. And just a little tap is all it takes. All right, so we got that coming off. Here we go. There's the uh, there's the center screw. There's a oil light bronze bushing in there. Everything else is Zamac. Okay. All right, now we're down to our drive gear, and it's held on by this collar. Okay, and it's it's got a set screw. I've already backed that set screw out. We're just reenacting here. I, with a pair of pliers, I put a rag around the collar so I wouldn't mar it up. If you got some soft jaw pliers, that would be better. It wasn't real tight, and I got that collar off, okay? The set screw, they've got some type of lead or soft metal insert in there, so the set screw does not bear down directly on the threads. Now this gear was not on there real tight, but it did take a little bit of effort. And did the two screwdriver method and just worked it off. It, obviously it's loose now, but it was it was you know quite a bit tighter the first time I did it. Same Mac gear with the uh, with the key. And we've got a series of screws here, a screw pattern. Uh, okay. As soon as I turn the camera off. I realized this was two piece, it actually fell apart. So just uh, watch out for okay, that. Okay, I already pulled the set screw on our drive pulley and the grease cap. 
and this was already loose so okay we're getting there we got a little burr on this shaft somewhere or on the on the pulley so there we go all right we're going to pull the ram off i think all we got to do is just uh unbolt the uh retaining bars here okay this side of the crosshead ram block facing the toward the table of the machine is the side without thread okay so here's the pinion shaft um, it's all cleaned up bagged up as you can see um, everything's fine bearings are good um, they were just crusted with you know extremely dried and hardened grease and it was a little bit of a struggle to get it out of the housing <clears throat> So here's the, the bearing cups, okay? So these guys go in, you know, they, they, they face in each, each side, and then you've got a, a couple of retaining uh, um, plugs here. But the fit for the, um, the cups is pretty dang tight. And combine that with the dry grease, it was, uh, it was difficult. So I had, as you can probably see the discoloration here, I had to warm the case up with the torch, just a propane torch. And then, you know, tappy tap tap. Um, just, uh, you know, taking my time. I finally got them to come out, you know, squirting penetrant and so forth. Just, you know, easing them back and forth and, uh, and working them out. But they did come out, but, but man, they were tight. Okay. Um, here's the hub for the main bull gear. And this was a struggle. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me go over to the bench here. This bearing support bracket, now this is on the outside of the main shaper body. And it bolts to the, to the body, okay? And then here's the, uh, the, the hub for the bull gear. And the, uh, the shaper body is sandwiched in between, okay, with this bearing race. I'm just making sure you guys can see. All right, so this bearing cup is like this, and it's, it's right in the, uh, the body of the machine, okay? And then this bearing would, would have been on here. So it's vision, envision it sandwiched, you know, in the, between the case, and then this is holding everything together and then you got one more bearing out here and this is a press together assembly so the the preload um, is held by by a press fit so getting this apart was not easy okay um, and then to compound it there's an inner shaft okay and this is where mr. bozo showed up okay so this inner shaft goes through there, and, and when everything's in place, you, it looks like one assembly, okay? Um, so, <laughs> I had to um, put a little, little heat on this bearing, not a whole lot, just with the propane torch. Actually, this is the wrong bearing. <laughs> one second. This bearing, okay, so this bearing's in here. I had to warm it up a little bit, and then I had um, soft hammer to drive this out, okay? And let me show you what went wrong. Okay, so once again, this goes through there, and it's pressed in. I don't wanna push it all the way in right now. So it sticks out, you know, about that much, okay? So, and then on the back of this is this adjusting screw is in the back plate of this and it changes the fulcrum to adjust the stroke, you know, for the, uh, uh, the main drive pin, okay? So anyways, here's what happened. So in the process of tapping this out, 
this guy goes in here, okay, and I didn't know it was in there like that, or didn't think it would come out both. <laughs> so there's a boss right here that holds that little crossfeed screw and gear right in here, okay? And it looked it didn't look like there was any need to take that out before tapping this out. Well, that was a mistake. So what happened, this started to go first, and I'm watching this side. I couldn't tell. It looked like everything was moving together, and it, and it might have the first few taps. But what happened is this started to come out. The, uh, uh, the bevel gear is in here, so this was pushing against the bevel gear, which is pushing on here, ended up breaking this boss out. So now we've got extra work, okay? Yeah, I was not happy about that. I even looked to see, <laughs> there was one of these on eBay, but uh, it was actually sold a few days before the incident happened. <laughs> so now I'm gonna have to come in here and uh, luckily this still fits good, V this out on both sides and I'm going to have to braze this back together. And then, you know, after brazing, we're going to have, you know, some slop in here. Um, you know, extra dingleberries and whatnot. So, I'm going to have to figure out how to clean that up after brazing. So, after this whole incident happened, I was really kicking myself and, and just really down because this assembly felt pretty good and it probably would have been fine if I just left it alone and, and had not gone that far. Um, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Afterwards, after getting these bearings cleaned up and you know, checking their condition and, and how they felt after getting them cleaned up, there's actually some pitting and some rough spots. So, I don't know, blessing in disguise. <laughs> These are, they're still available. They're not real common bearings from Timken. So they want top dollar. I even went to my local bearing supplier who I know several people there. I've known them for over 20 years. And uh, we worked together trying to find them. And they, and they had them, but the prices were ridiculous. Um, I found it NOS. Um, uh, on eBay and it looks fine. So that, that that'll work out good. So that's that one This cup uh, It's on order. It's on its way it should be here in the next day or two. I did find one of those NOS as well and Then this one here is the outer one Which matches up Here, okay, this is the old one obviously um, And this one <laughs> was reasonable this one is the same as a Model A Ford wheel bearing. <laughs> so there's quite a few of these available. And the uh, same thing, NOS uh, off of eBay. Okay. Uh, this cup is actually, there's, a, there's some, you know, staining. Um, there's no real pits. I mean, if you went in with a high magnification, you could probably see some small ones. Um, but it's not bad, so I'm going to leave this this race alone um, for two reasons. One, it's not that bad. Second reason, this one is not easy to get out. They did not leave any kind of a shoulder behind here uh, to, to, to be able to tap that out. So what you have to do in a case like this is you got to come in with a, with a torch, heat up a spot, so that it's, you know, cherry red, let it cool. Then come back, heat up a different spot, cherry red, let it cool. Usually it takes three times. Heat up another spot, let it get cherry red, and let it cool. You gotta do it quickly. Heat it up as fast as you can and then get out, okay? And what happens, the, the, that'll, that'll cause the bearing metal to shrink up and usually it'll just fall right out. The other way you can do it, 
you can take an arc welder and you can just weld um, same thing just run a nice weld bead let it cool down rotate run another weld bead it'll do the same thing it'll it'll heat that base metal up and when it cools it'll shrink a little bit and eventually you can get the race to fall out trouble with the arc welder is you're gonna have splatter all over the place so you gotta you know spray it down with cooking spray or whatever to, for the splatter so oxyacetylene torch would be better but I'm gonna leave it alone there's uh, <laughs> you know rather than take the risk of of you know doing some damage for one that is not that bad actually it's pretty good it's not worth it so <laughs> that's as far as I'm going check it out our other uh, bearing cup came in and look at that box I mean this is what your typical Timken box looks like okay and this was definitely NOS all right and I've been buying Timken bearings for over 40 years and I've never seen this style box that's got to be pretty old um, I did open it up let me uh, let me open it up I'll bring it right back yeah so it looks good I mean there's Cosmoline I'm gonna have to clean off but uh, I actually went on the internet and tried to uh, get a date on this style logo um, you can find this logo out there but I could not find anything that dated it but I'm guessing this is probably at least 50 years old yeah so anyway I thought that was really cool oh I didn't show the backside yeah so very cool just love this the old packaging that is really neat and the other thing is is here's this this is a pretty old one and you know it has the different manufacturing locations but the new one <laughs> new one the old old one the only location is Canton Ohio so I think that's pretty dang old that's cool all right so this is the RAM adjustment lead screw for positioning the RAM after you set the stroke uh, everything here looks pretty good gears cleaned up nicely the the gears are backed up with this is kind of like a fiber paper fiber um, washer thrust washer actually this one goes on there anyway you can see there's a slight problem here with this one I don't know what kind of material this is. I'm just thinking of maybe just trying to duplicate these with brass shim. These are 25,000 thick. I've already measured them. This one here is still okay. It goes on the back side of this one here. Okay. But if I'm going to duplicate one, I might duplicate both. We'll see. I almost forgot about this. All right. So, no, you're not seeing double. There's two of these. <laughs> this is the crank pin. So this goes in the bull gear, and it moves back and forth with that adjusting screw. The lead screw is behind here. But this pin, you see that? It's loose. So what they did, I believe this is a press fit. And it's it's got a little, it's a it's a reduced diameter press fit, and then they did a did a, a a tack weld back here and ground it off. Okay, so I could just grind that out and re weld it, but the uh, it's been it's been working itself around in here, so the it's no longer a press fit. So I'm worried that even if I re weld this, it may end up cracking again. So luckily, <laughs> I didn't. This was a long shot. Because I've never seen one of these on eBay before, but there was one on eBay. So this one's good. So I went ahead and, and bought that. The only thing that's different is this one has a little chamfer for the screw that holds that down. And this one doesn't, so I'll, I'll just put a little matching chamfer on there. All right, so I've still got a few of these parts to clean. Most are clean, but I'm going to go through and just 
recheck everything. There's a few things I need to wire wheel and so forth. I'm going to get all that ready and uh, we've got painting to do also. I'll probably show a little bit of that, not much. And then um, I'm going to try to do the entire assembly, maybe in one video, maybe two. We'll see how it goes, um, rather than nit nitpicking the whole thing.